Alright guys, it's been a couple days, uh, two days, and I threw a couple of these medium sized serving bowls. So this isn't the exact one in the other video, but close enough. Um, time to trim. First step is to flip it over onto my trimming bat, um, which is just a plastic bat with some uh, yoga mat cut out and then spray adhesive on there to uh, to keep it down. Uh, this is great because you don't have to use clay plugs or anything. This make it a little bit hard to find the bat pin sometimes, but this bowl is funky. But uh, we get to take care of that. Get centered up here. Look at the rim as well as the foot to get it centered. Uh, sometimes this is a little bit funky right here and uh, doesn't really give a great indication of what's on center and what's not. So, I'm just going to start cutting. This uh, has a nice wide rim with the the flared, flared rim and everything, so it's got plenty of surface area to hold it, hold it down to the mat. So, kind of start spotting out my foot ring where I want it to be um, based on the size of the rim. I have a pretty good idea what I'm looking for. And uh, it tends to be, you know, especially when you're throwing a bowl, you leave a lot of extra clay right here. So uh, don't be shy about trimming that pretty aggressively um, through here. That's how you get a nice light bowl as opposed to a big clunker. That's kind of the foot ring I'm looking at. Um, I'll start there. I always start a little bit bigger and then you can trim it down later. Obviously you can't go back, so just digging this out here. I'm gonna, I've been using the side of the tool and I'm going to use the tip of the tool to uh, kind of cut up and in and create that foot ring. Come back through here and make sure it's got a nice curve to it. That's the foot I'm looking at. Um, so I'm going to start cutting the uh, inside here. Just using the tip to uh, start a little bit thicker than, you know, make the foot ring a little bit thicker at the beginning and uh, work down from there. I always want to work pretty incrementally. I uh, tend to tap so I know where I am. Um, the uh, sound changes as it gets thinner. It'll get more papery. 
sound more hollow. Um, that's when you know you got to slow down. Or just be, be cautious at that point. The idea is to have a nice continuous curve. Uh, this curve essentially continues on the inside at the same depth up to the center and then back down. So um, the center point here just has to be below the foot ring. Um, you know, it could sag a little bit in the firing, but uh, just an eighth of an inch below the foot ring is enough. Like I said, I left that foot extra thick, um, coming back inside now, trimming this way, um, kind of trim it out to its final width. Tweaking everything up now and making sure it's where I want it to be. Tap that again. Tapping is a great technique to use um, when you're learning to trim because it's kind of a, a gauge of where you are. And uh, you know, if you reach that danger zone, you'll know it. You tap in your pot. Part of what comes with uh, repetition is knowing how much I left at the foot when I threw this. Um, so when you're just starting your, your throwing career, it's uh, a little bit more difficult because you kind of don't have your bearings and everything. So I'll take a little bit more off of this foot ring. And, uh, and we'll be done trimming. One thing I do is I don't make just a flat foot ring. I have a flat part on the inside and then a uh, bevel here at the edge. And what that does is it makes the pot a little more dynamic when it sits. Um, it doesn't sit heavily on the table. It actually has a, a nice shadow line that, that uh, sets it off. Um, it's those little things that make a good pot great. Um, so, you know, after you do 100 bowls, you start tweaking up all the little things and kind of putting your signature on everything. And, you know, it looks like it belongs to you. It looks like you made it. I think I'm done with that step. Um, next step I'm actually using, this is a, is a white stoneware so it has some frit to it. Um, as you trim that, maybe you can see, uh, it leaves kind of a granular pattern in the clay as the frit drags. Um, so what I do is I smooth that out using a uh, Cheryl Mud Tools. Uh, this is a red one, so it's the softest. It's almost like a chamois. Um, super useful. Great for finishing pots. And with the stoneware, I'm going to... If your pot's wet enough, you don't have to do this step. But if it's been sitting around, like this one's two days old. So uh, I'm actually going to wet the clay. And what that does is it expands the, the uh, clay particles. And uh, it'll fill in all those little gaps and I smooth it out. I'm 
foot ring, I use a stainless steel rib. So I want a nice flat base for that to sit on. I feel like with the rubber rib, it doesn't give you a flat, flat finish. Wet the outside of the pot here and smooth that same as we did before. Last step, uh, this is the my throwing knife, and it has a little tongue depressor on the back. I just use that to, uh, to uh, finish the foot ring on the outside here. Oh, one final step. Always got to sign your pot. There we go. See a little bit of chatter there, but uh, that's uh, something that my glaze actually covers up. I use more of a uh, more of an opaque glaze, so. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment, uh, repost this video, and um, see you next time. Bye.